All right, let's see what we got here. All right, welcome back to Camera West TV. My name's Carlo, and on today's episode, we're taking a look at the new Leica Q3. So you may have noticed that I'm using the Q3 to film this portion of the video right now. Uh, pretty much Leica is marketing this camera as the perfect everyday camera for photo and for video. So we're gonna try something a little different and film this video a little bit more vlog style. I'm gonna use it over the course of a couple days so I can kind of get a real sense of how to use it rather than give you just a first look at the camera. So what I'm gonna do today is walk around through Chinatown and then possibly get down to the wharf. And then the next few days, we'll, we'll just take it as it goes. So I hope you enjoy this format of the video. It's definitely something different and something new. And ultimately, I just wanted to see how this camera could be used for this style of video. So I hope you enjoy and I'll let voiceover Carlo take the reins. So go for it. All right, thanks for the handover, first person Carlo. We're gonna take it from here and kind of go through some tech specs. First, this is the first ever 60 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, triple resolution technology featured in a Q body, along with a lot of benefits that come with the Q camera line. This also is the first one to give you a digital crop of up to 90 millimeters or the equivalent of 90 millimeters. I feel like even though you don't get the same compression, as a true 90 mil or a 75, 35, or 50, you still have the satisfaction knowing that you can undo the crop later or you can keep the crop, if, especially if you're shooting in JPEG. It's pretty much an M11 sensor in a Q body. So imagine having autofocus, but on an M11. And that's a pretty huge feat, which is probably why the new Maestro 4 processor is much more powerful than previous generations. So since this is a new camera and it's pretty high tech, they introduced a new Maestro 4 processor with eight gigs of buffer memory. Now this camera doesn't have internal storage much like the M11 series. You know, if you're doing like continuous shooting or even for video, that buffer memory will save you in the long run, especially with a high speed read and write card. Um, you definitely are gonna want one of those. Now this camera features a new state-of-the-art hybrid autofocus system with contrast and phase detection, especially for the eye, face, and body. Or if you like photographing your pets, it has animal tracking, which is great, especially if you're trying to track any fast moving objects, people, or especially if you just wanna react much more quickly. And this camera also has 10 times faster wireless transfer speeds via the Leica Photos app. It's embedded with multi-input, multi-output, or MIMO technology. Now, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I was filming with the Leica Q3, and I was using it as more of a vlogging camera, so to speak. And Leica's marketing this camera as the perfect everyday camera for video and for photo. So they added two new ports on the side here. Let me just get focus. So now you have two new ports. You have one for mini HDMI, which is perfect for video recording or playback on the TV. And the USB-C is perfect for charging, data transfer, and tethered shooting. So you can shoot tethered with the Q3. So Leica has created a new version of the Leica Q battery or SL battery, however you want to look at it. This is the BP SCL6. It looks exactly like the BP SCL4. You get 18% more power from this battery. The old batteries will still work in this new camera. The only thing is you won't be able to use the 8K video formats. So if you need 8K, you're gonna need the new battery. If not, then you're fine with the old battery. So at the time of filming this video, um, this new battery is not certified to work on the previous versions of the cameras, but in our testing, it has worked. So yeah, I think you won't have any problem using this new battery in the future. So this camera also features wireless charging 
which I think is pretty useful, especially for today's day and age of our type of batteries. We can just charge without having to remove the battery for most things these days. And the fact that Leica is also thinking about the accessories that match with that wireless charging capability, such as the hand grip and making their own wireless dock, I think is a good benefit. Like I mentioned earlier, the rear of the camera is probably the most exciting changes to the Leica Q. Pretty much you have everything on the right side of the camera now. This is the redesign of the back of the new Q3. So we have all the buttons, the play, the menu, and the D-pad. You have, I believe, three function buttons. You have the center of the D-pad, as well as these two buttons here. You can just program them via long hold. I also forgot to mention that the top of the scroll wheel is a function button. So you have a total of four function buttons, not three. I guess we'll just jump into the tiltable screen. So you can basically look, it's not a full flat angle. There's still kind of a slight angle there. Another thing I forgot to mention is how strong this screen actually is. You know, pretty strong. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing that all the time. So according to Leica, the screen has a 76% increase in resolution compared to the Leica Q2. And the new EVF has a 56% increase in resolution compared to the Leica Q2 and is now identical in resolution and frame rate as the Leica SL2 and SL2S viewfinders. And I also have a normal Q2 right here to kind of give you a side-by-side -side view of what they look like. I think from the front, they're pretty much identical. I felt like I was trying to hide the camera, especially when I was in public. Um, I didn't really want too many people seeing what I was shooting with, but I guess at first glance, it looks so much like the Q2 that no one really noticed. All right, so we're gonna go over the last couple days of using this camera. Like I advertised this camera to be the perfect everyday camera in general for video or for photos or for both. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if I could make a full or almost a full video using just this camera while making photos and just seeing what the ergonomics would be like for the everyday vlogger or casual YouTuber. I think with a camera like this, you have a lot of power built inside. And I just wanted to test what that workflow would be like. From the first day, I was extremely excited to try out this camera. I thought that this could be the replacement camera for the SL2S. What made me think that was that this had the extra ports. I thought this was gonna be a great alternative if I needed a lighter setup to film more thumbprints and signatures or focal points or just have kind of a lower profile setup compared to the SL2. And if you haven't seen the setup for these videos, you can check that in the link right above. And my second thought was, oh wow, this is a high resolution sensor with autofocus and image stabilization. You know, that checked a lot of boxes for me. So the first thing that I did was I went out and I filmed some skating with my friend Brian. And slowly but surely, the video footage started to look a little artificial and kind of wonky to me. And I was trying to figure out why that was. And that was mostly due to the optical image stabilizer that caused a lot of the footage to look a little jello-y and kind of warped in some areas. I just noticed that when the camera would pan really quickly or move too quickly, you would just notice this very artificial kind of wavy look to it. And I thought that it didn't look very natural, especially for filming motion. So with the SL2S, it has in-body image stabilization. So that is holding the sensor in place or like at least minimizing some shake for the sensor. While this one, I think it's built into the lens. So you have two different versions of image stabilization that work differently from one another. So in that aspect, I think the SL2S is still gonna be the winner, especially if you wanna do like more movement with the camera. I think that'll give you a more natural type of handheld look versus what the Q3 offers. And then after that, I decided to take some photos around the park. I wanted to see what the low light capabilities were gonna be like, especially since this is pretty much the same sensor as the M11. You know, you have 14 stops of dynamic range and you're able to recover your shadows with a lot of detail. I also played around with some sample videos using the different crop modes. And I also did the crop modes for photo. As you can see, the more you crop in, especially all the way to 90 millimeters, it gets a little grainy. It gets a little fuzzy. It's not the best. Moving on to day two. Day two is pretty much the intro that you saw. I already had an idea of what the camera could do. So I took that knowledge and applied it for that day of filming. Pretty much I treated this day like a vlog, but this was a great way to test the camera in broad daylight. 
with San Francisco's weather being a little spotty as of lately, it's been hard to have, you know, sunlight for some of these photos. I pretty much stuck around F16 and I tried to use the crop and macro modes as much as I could. All right, so we have the iPhone cam going and I will say using it one-handed has been pretty nice. You can switch between video, photo, press of this function button here. And then, you know, you have all of your buttons on this side of the camera now. So I keep getting tripped up wanting to press the left side of the camera. But so far, I can really do like a nice one-handed shot. And then even like shooting from the hip is pretty nice. So I will say that the use of, let me just flip it up. There we go. The use of this screen helps me shoot from the hip a little easier. So, kind of like, boom, boom. And then let's see what we got. Nice. Someone got it. I wasn't even paying attention, but it kind of looks good. Yeah, well, you'll see it on the actual screen. So, here you go. Quick little break from walking around. I wanna give you guys a little preview of my setup for sound. I'm using my phone plus my Ceramonic wireless mics. Um, I'm just gonna sync the audio and post and hope for the best. Maybe I'm just missing something, so hopefully if you guys have a solution, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go the old fashioned way and just sync sound, so. So yeah. So I mostly kept the camera set to automatic functions with the exception of the ISO. I kind of wanted to see what it would be like if I were new to photography and I was just starting out to get that sense of, okay, if I had a camera that could do all these things, but I don't know what to do or how to do it yet, could this camera do it for me? And the answer was pretty much, yeah. Like this camera could do it for you. Like if you're just getting into photography or if you're just getting into video, I think this camera could help you get over shooting with an iPhone or a smartphone, or you know, even like a smaller sensor camera because this gives you the best output that you could possibly imagine, especially for its size and form factor. But I do think it serves as a good starting base, especially if you're wanting to dabble in both photo and video. All right, so we didn't end up going to the wharf. Now we're just gonna head back to the store. Um, I think that was a good one amount of photos that we took while walking around for this few hours. We're gonna go back to the store and kind of just pack up and prep for another day of shooting. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put the camera back in this nice Oberworth bag. The new Q bag and this is the gentian color. I'll show up better in the studio. So yeah. All right, we're on day, I think, three of using the Q3. Um, after yesterday's walk, I had some pretty good ideas and I looked over the footage. So far, it looks pretty good. I'm not using any external recording devices. This is just directly into the camera. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get on with our day. It's a nice foggy day in San Francisco. Just gotta make sure the autofocus is on my face. That was something I kind of noticed that wasn't as accurate as I was using it the entire time. So, um, yeah, we'll just work with it and see what, what we get. It's foggy. Come on, focus. There we go. Foggy day. I didn't shoot too many photos, but I did shoot a lot of video tests and a lot of kind of cropped in video. I did do a lot of driving and filming, which I personally don't recommend. But if you found the impulse to make a shot or try and record some video, this camera can do it. All right, so this is the end of day three. So right now I have the optical stabilization turned on. Um, it should be doing fine to minimize a lot of my hand shaking. I noticed that that's really all it's good for is for steady shots. Like you can definitely keep your shot fairly steady, but you know, I think 
it holds its own as kind of more of a, like if you stay in one spot and you're filming. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. Anyway, let's put you back. All right. All right. Right now we're on day four with the new Q3. Um, I got the sound recorder direct to my phone again. Um, it's kind of windy outside, another foggy day in San Francisco. We're actually walking down to Beta Breakers, uh, it's going on today. So we'll uh, go capture some classic SF madness. Sweet. We're walking on to the course right now. Got some green men. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah. There we go. Got a bunch of runners. Got a bunch of people in costume parting it up in San Francisco. So this should be good for some good photo ops. I think we might have missed some of the madness already, but there's a lot to go around. While trying to move and navigate through the crowds, I feel like you just don't have time to react or try and like focus. So knowing that this camera can nail autofocus with precision, especially using the tracking modes, I think was really helpful. Obviously, like I said, it was really hard to get around. So the crop modes were super handy. It kind of helped bridge the gap between me and whatever I wanted to photograph. Also during that time, I tried to sync some sound to my phone again, but it was just so chaotic that I ended up trying to just rely on the internal microphone. So again, I apologize for the very bad sound in this video. So got done with all of the Beta Breakers madness, kind of crowd some photos on Hate Street. Um, didn't really get to film too much because it was so crazy, but hopefully that was enough uh, San Francisco madness. So yeah. So, wanted to walk around at night, get some more night photos with this camera. Um, also interested to see what it looks like filming video at night. So um, again, I'm only using kind of like the automatic settings. And this time I'm also not using any audio equipment. So this is in camera and hopefully the audio is not terrible. And also I think I have uh, optical image stabilization on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty dark right now. Lastly, we ended off the day by walking around at night, trying to see what this camera can do in pretty much really low light conditions. I think it was a good test to push this camera in different settings, especially since it was foggy and a little bit windy. All right, so we're walking around pretty much the Richmond district now, uh, and we found the highlights of the night. melts. The perfect place for night photos. You finally get to see what the optical stabilization does, especially for filming at night. I think it's a huge difference from day one, especially after learning how I could best utilize that feature. I think the fog was also a good element to use while at night. Um, I think it showed how well this lens performs. Being able to have a autofocus lens does have its benefits. So those tracking modes definitely come in handy, especially when you're not able to nail precise focus all the time. Well, we're wrapping up the night and I think we got a lot of cool stuff. That was a really cool backdrop. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the studio. All right, so we are here back in the studio. 
Um, pretty much this is the last day that we have with the Leica Q3. And so I'm here to talk about my user experience for the last couple of days. And to make things a little easier, let's jump back to the SL2S. As I mentioned earlier, I was syncing sound through my phone because of the audio ports or lack of audio ports. Uh, again, if you know a solution, please let me know down in the comments because I would have really liked to have done the entire video vlog style. You know, I kind of gave up in certain aspects because it was too much work to sync audio or even have that time to set up that function on my phone. Kind of relied on the in-camera mic, so I um, apologize in advance if that sound was terrible. For this camera, I had digital crop and switching between photo and video for these two, I had this top one be my ISO. I had this middle one programmed to control the optical stabilization for the video mode. And while I was in photo mode, this one toggled between the EVF to LCD and to the auto mode. So the eye sensor would work. I'm a big fan of having safe functions so you don't really have to think too much about using your camera. You can just press a button and know what it's gonna do and you can create a workflow that's truly unique to you. So there's a couple other features that I didn't get to use that are built into this camera, such as IDR and the Leica Looks profiles. IDR just makes sure that you don't clip any of your highlights and clip any of your shadows. So you have pretty good range all across your images for JPEGs. And the Leica Looks profiles are image presets that you can download using the Leica Photos app. These are mostly for JPEG use and I was shooting in RAW for pretty much the entire time. And at the time of filming this, we're using a beta camera with beta software. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, all of those functions are fully functioning in the final version of the camera. So here are some of my final thoughts on the Leica Q3. I feel like it was almost too easy to make photos and I think that's a good thing. Sometimes you need something that can just help you make the photo rather than, you know, spend a lot of time trying to calculate light or composing. I think being able to snap off like quick photos or snapshots is pretty much the point of a point and shoot. You just point and shoot. Basically, it's a M11 with autofocus. And not to mention that you have a high resolution sensor mixed with pro level video capabilities. I think that's just something that this camera, no matter what skill level you're at, can suit pretty much any need that you need it to do. I also forgot to mention that I didn't really use the 8K video formats for this camera. I just felt like the file size was a little too big for what I was wanting to do. I think if you want to make high quality videos and you want all the detail and you want to maximize the sensor and the resolution, sure, you can use the 8K, but I think you also need to have the hardware to match, whereas most computers these days can handle 4K pretty well. I should also mention that the 8K file formats only go up to 30 frames per second. So if you're needing 60 frames or faster frame rate, you might as well go with the 4K formats. This camera also does support ProRes. I haven't really had much use for ProRes, but it's there if you need it. And the video settings I used for this camera, I tried to match the SL2S. So that was the Cine 4K 23.97 frames per second, 10 bit. So whether you are new to video, whether you are a pro at video, I think this camera has something to offer. So I think the autofocus on this camera was pretty responsive. Even when I had it this far out from me, it was tracking my face even while I was walking. I truly felt like I was a vlogger in that aspect. It was a little awkward at first, but you know, after a while, I think if I had a selfie stick and a proper way to mic this camera, you know, maybe, maybe this might be the new camera. Who knows? I don't think that this camera will replace my SL2S as a video camera anytime soon, but I do think it'll come in handy for certain projects or, you know, special things where I need a two camera setup. And lastly, as you've noticed, we have the new Oberworth Q bag in the Gentian color. I mentioned this earlier in the video. It was a pretty cropped in view. So this is kind of a nicer quality leather. I think it's really soft and, you know, smooth to the touch. I pretty much used this bag the entire time of filming just to kind of get an idea of what it would be like to use this bag. It really does only hold just the cue and ultimately nothing else, maybe like a few spare batteries. But I think if you're wanting to just travel and you need something to carry the camera in and carry a few accessories or like your phone, wallet, keys, I think this is the bag for you. And it comes in a different assortment of colors, which will hopefully be available by the time this video launches. And yeah, I just wanted to thank Overworth again for sending over these bags. I think it was a really cool addition. 
to incorporate in this video. Well, this wraps up this episode of Camera West TV. I really hope you enjoyed this style of video. This was my first time making, you know, a vlog-esque video, or I guess this was a vlog for the most part. I do think I'll have some use for the like a Q3 in the future, especially for video. Now that I've spent enough time using the camera, I do have some ideas of what I could use this camera for. So let me know down in the comments what you think of the new Leica Q3, and let me know what you think you would use the Leica Q3 for mostly. Would you use it for photo, for video? Would you use it for both? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new camera. And don't forget to check out LeicaStoreSF.com and CameraWest.com for all your camera needs. Use their pre-owned. We have plenty of bags such as this Oberworth Q bag and you can definitely find the Q3 and all the tech specs on our website. And also don't forget to check out the blog post down below. It's gonna have all the images from this video and also spend some time re-watching some of the video footage. I think it could be a good tool for you guys to use in the future if you ever need some type of reference, you know, shooting at night, shooting during the day, using the crop modes. Let me know down in the comments what you think. All right, let's do a proper sign off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Carlo from Camera West TV. I'll see you next time.